Okay, I had initially planned like this elaborate introduction, but because of the time we have, we want to get right into it, and because I also want to hear from the brother. Uh, he's been a personal hero of mine since I was uh, young, um, helping us to re-examine everything from politics to culture to religion, and was one of the first to taught my generation to wear a Jimmy hat. So, you know, I got to give it to him, Brother KRS-1. Wow, first of all, Oh, right to my page. That's <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you. That was excellent. Um, Mona, that, uh, this, I, I want to just piggyback on what you just saw uh, real quick, because a lot of what I'm discussing has to do with this. There were several things. One was that we were looking at the role of women in hip hop. And this is a great place to start, actually. I had a different start, but this is a good start, actually, because women in hip-hop are more important than men in hip-hop. I don't say that because we just watched this. <laughs> I'm saying this very truthfully, and I'm about to back it up, too. So if you have this, also, this lecture is being recorded. You need to go. Uh, get the recording of this. I'm going to go through about 40 years of hip-hop's history as quick as I can. Uh, and the reason I say get the tape is because some of... Oh, get the tape. Damn, damn. <laughs> uh, the reason I say get the recording <laughs> is because uh, what I'm, a lot of what I'm going to go over is, is not, it, it's not to be retained in memory. It's a lot of facts and dates and stuff like that. So... Um, Come back to women in hip-hop. Hip-hop began with a woman named Cindy. Never forget this name ever. Whenever you speak of hip-hop, the first lady of hip-hop is a woman named Cindy. Campbell, by the way, Cindy Campbell. Cindy, also known as Pep, lived at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue in the Bronx. She had a birthday coming up and said to her little brother, why don't you play music at my birthday party? 1520 Sedgwick Avenue, August 11th, 1973. Cindy's little brother, a guy named Cool DJ Hurt, yeah. Stop doing graffiti. He was a graffiti writer first. <laughs> then he went into b boy or breaking. Then his sister asked him, Can you play some music at my party? He said, All right. They went down to the 1520 Cedric Avenue Community Center. And this guy, Cool Hurt, began playing James Brown. He would only play the breaks of James Brown. Now, understand the difference. Cool Herc is from Jamaica. Big up. <laughs> In 1967, he came to the United States with his parents. His father was a mechanic. His mother was a nurse. Look at this. Health, technology. He comes, I'm just giving you some background. He comes with the Jamaican dance hall tradition, which was to be outside in a park area with huge speakers, probably up to this size right here, huge speakers stacked up. And you'd have about three or four or five turntables. Well, really, in Jamaica, you only could afford one. <laughs> but some sound systems like Stone Love, GT International, Saxon, Coxon, these sounds, they had like...